five gram bullet moving with an initial speed of 400 meters per second. It's fired and passes through a one kilogram block. So it hits the block, passes through the block, and continues on its way. The block is initially at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. The box is connected to a spring. The spring has a spring constant of 900 newtons per meter. After the bullet has hit the block and passed through, the block moves five centimeters to the right. Find the speed at which the bullet emerges from the block. What type of collision is this? Inelastic. Inelastic. Exactly right. There's deformation. The bullet leaves a little hole in the block as it bores its way through. So there was friction between the block and the bullet. So energy, we can't say that the initial kinetic energy of the bullet transforms into potential energy of the spring. Because not all of it does. Some of the energy is lost, meaning it's not potential energy or kinetic energy anymore. It goes into the friction. But for any collision at all, we know that momentum has to be conserved. It doesn't matter what type of collision it is, momentum always has to be conserved. So initially, right before the collision happens, the bullet has momentum. Its momentum is its mass times its speed. We know its mass, we know its speed. The block has no momentum initially because it's not moving initially. After the collision has occurred, the bullet's still moving. In fact, we're trying to find out how fast it's moving. So it still has momentum. But the block is now moving. Right after the collision has happened, the block is moving. So it has momentum as well. We know the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block. We know the initial speed at which the bullet was traveling. We're looking for the final speed of the bullet, but we don't know the speed of the block. So we need to get that piece of information first. Well, the bullet, because it makes the block move, the block now has kinetic energy. The bullet's long gone. It's no longer affecting the block. Once it has passed through the block, it's gone. It doesn't do anything else. So the block has kinetic energy for the fact that it's moving. This speed is the same as this one. What happens to the kinetic energy of the block now that the collision's over? Transverse to? The spring, the potential energy of the spring. You know, the potential energy of spring is one half kx squared. So once the collision is over, energy is conserved. Because there's no friction. It's on a frictionless surface. So let's see. The one halves cancel. Speed of the block will be the square root of k x squared over m of the block. k is 900, x is 5 centimeters, so 0 0.05 meters. Mass of the block is 1 kilogram. So the speed of the block right after the collision is 1.5 meters per second. Taking this back to our momentum equation, now we know the speed of the, ball, of the block, we can find the speed of the bullet. Bring the momentum of the block over to the other side, divide by the mass of the bullet, that will give us the final speed of the bullet. So the mass of the bullet is 5 grams. We need it to be in kilograms, so 0 0.005 kilograms. Initial speed is 400 meters per second. Mass of the block is 1. The speed of the block we just found out to be 1.5. Mass of the bullet, 0 0.005. So the speed of the bullet 
finally ends up being 100 meters per second. Keep in mind, the only time you can use energy for a collision itself is if it's perfectly elastic. That means the objects bounce off of each other and they do not deform in any way each other. Okay? So this one, for example, the bullet bores a hole in the block. Of course, we're ignoring the amount of mass of the block that becomes sawdust when we solve this problem. We're assuming it's awfully small compared to the overall size of the block. Questions?